jeans is so filthy! Oh, oh my gosh! Goodbye. See you, Attack Buster. It's intense. Yes! What is happening? Welcome to another picture video breakdown. My name is Apollica, and oh my gosh, I can't, I can't contain myself! It's Paul Skeens! It's the guy, look, we look at your YouTube comments. This guy, this guy, this guy, they all want Paul Skeens. I wanted Paul Skeens and I needed the game. I needed a good game from Paul Skeens to be like, yes, there he is. So, what does Paul Skeens do? Well, it's pretty obvious from the first pitch. He throws really hard, throws 99, and he's really low at it too. Um, he has a pretty good release angle on it. The interesting thing about Paul Skeens though, is that this fastball, it doesn't have good vertical break. What does this mean? This is a big thing this year. It's called IVB, induced vertical break. It's a little different than what you see on StatCast. You can check out IVB for every single pitcher in every game on our game logs. Look at this. You go to Paul Skeens' game log on the pitcher list page, and then you click on the row. All this stuff expands, and then you click the new thing we got. It's called stuff. You go to stuff. And you're going to see, oh my gosh, there's IVB. It's great. What is the league average, Nick? What would that be? Well, then you go to the repertoire section up here. You go to the stuff tab. You see IVB. And you see the percentiles for every single stat in the majors. Every single one that we have. We've got the average and we've got the percentile. So you can learn about every single stat we have. We have tooltips for it all. It's great. So what's important is that this induced vertical break does it stay up? Does it look like it's going to be rising? Does it look like it's uh, going to miss above the bat or not? Well, Paul Skeens has a really big drop on his. But the thing is, he can actually get get more whiffs low because of that. It's kind of interesting. So anyway, he throws 99. Obviously dope. You don't need anything else. Oh, you don't need all these advanced stats because he throws 99. Yeah. He's just going to get whiffs because he throws 99. Okay? I mean, that's pretty straightforward. The thing is, though, Paul Skeens has more than just 99. He has 100. <laughs> oh man, he averages 99. He averages 99, the hardest average four seamer than any starting pitcher in the majors. Gosh, it's pretty good. We're gonna watch a lot of this because we gotta see some things. So there's that thing. What the heck? It's 95 miles per hour. It's called the splinker, which I really think is more like the one seam fastball. It, it's really 95 miles per hour of a, like a split movement just down. It's an aggressive, aggressive sinker, really. Oh my gosh. It is it is one of the highest rated pitches in the majors. Here at Pitcher List, I developed uh, stats across my years. And the one that I worked on for five years with the great Kyle Bland and Colin Charles is PLV, Pitch Level Value. Otherwise, or Pitcher List Value, if you really want. But it gives a grade to every single pitch on a scale of 0 to 10 and says, all right, is this good or not? If you have a 6 PLV, and this is based on all the qualities of the pitch, how fast it is, the movement of it, the location of it too, not like stuff plus, this one actually cares about location. And we look at every single pitch and we give that rating. If you get like a 5, that's pretty much average for under, under or actually it's like a little below average for secondaries. For a fastball, if you get above like a 5-2, ooh, good stuff. But a 6 is what Paul Skeens has. Those are legendary statuses. Oh, a 6 PLV. Oh, man. And this this splitter, splinker, whatever you want to call it, is a 6. So, oh, I, I'm sorry. I messed up with a 95, and I'm just going to throw 100 past you. I mean, this is just dumb. Like, this is cheat codes. Why do you need to throw that splinker if you can just throw 99 past them, right? Yeah, I mean, you keep going at it again. I don't care. Don't, don't get cute. Don't get, yeah. Okay, fine. Finally, green fouls it off. 100. Congrats. You made contact with the fastball. Congratulations. All right, so now you throw the splinker away and you get him. Is that pretty much what happens? Or you just throw another 100 past him? Yep. Splinker, not even away. It's just inside. It's This is so nasty because remember the previous pitch? Where does this pitch land, right? It's right on the inside corner right over here, okay? Oh, I nailed that. So now you throw this one. It looks like it's a little bit further in, but pretty much the same fastball, except it just drops underneath it. Six mile per hour difference. You're done. You're so done. It's it's really crazy. Oh my gosh. So now we got a righty and he starts off with the splinker. And this is just, what, what do you do? Nobody's hitting this. That's, oh. Oh my gosh. All right. Oh, one. 
Yeah, sure, throw a slider. There's no way he's time for a slider at 89. Just get it out, get, get done. And there's this misconception that a slider is a whiff pitch. And it generally is. But how Skeens uses it here is not to get a whiff. It is to get a strike in the zone. And honestly, you get a quick out. You throw this at 01 because maybe it gets to 02. And then cool, then you'll put him away. But what you'd rather have after throwing 95 is this 01 slider that is over the plate. And he's so out on his front foot. And he gets it. The barrel of the bat is not going to get this ball. It's going to be more at the end of the bat. He's going to roll over it and you get a quick out. And look, you just got an out on two pitches, right? That's so much better than an out on three pitches. That's 50% better. Okay, he tugs that four seamer. Get my calibrate. Throw it again. I don't want to change anything. Just throw that one again. Good. And you go, oh, 100. Oh, man. That's just so dumb. I mean, okay, so there's this old thing that I've been saying for a while about how down and in this spot here uh, is the easiest place to, to hit a baseball. And why I say that is because you can literally just drop the bat and the bat will move itself um, and help you uh, with gravity, really, to get your swing speed up. And I've, I've said that for a while. And then we finally got StatCast metrics out. And you talk, listen to Eno Saris and I talk about uh, pitching on the craft, which is the number one uh, baseball podcast. I uh, Definitely go check that out, by the way. If you're just nerds about pitching, then you have to be listening to this podcast. I'm not, I'm not kidding. Um, and he said, yeah, Nick, down and in is the fastest bat speed on average. Not a shock. So if you're gonna throw 100, you generally actually don't want to throw it here because you're giving them the highest chance to connect because they can speed up their bat as much as possible to get it. But who cares, it's 100. <laughs> you're not gonna hit it. <laughs> you're just not. Uh, oh man, he falls up with a splinker underneath. What a take by Canna. I mean, that could have been a fastball right down the middle you just took, but you thought, no, it's gonna be a secondary. Wow, what a take, what a take. Oh, cool. I love this angle of the slider. I mean, look, this, fortunately, I can tell that this is just a, a free real estate slider. It's not really free real estate. It's 2 1. But with the way that can, um, why again? Did he foul it? I don't know. What, what, what is this? Okay, fouled it straight down. Okay, fine. Please go away from that. Oh, thank you. He just fouled that one off down. You throw a fastball up now. No, don't no, no, no. slider. He's he's so out in front. Terrible spot. Why? Where's the glove on this? The you hit the glove. Here's the glove. You hit the glove. Get the glove better. Throw a fastball. Please just throw a fastball past him. No, you missed it. Do it again. Two two. You throw the same pitch again, right? That's the rule. Yeah, but oh, this this bothers me. Why? Because Paul Skeens, look, you miss over here. Okay, you missed. You tugged. Okay. So in your next pitch, you have to make an adjustment. You don't want to repeat the same thing again. You did. You repeated the same thing again. Veteran pitchers are veterans, and they're good and efficient because they make those adjustments. Be better. Um, there's 100. Colt Keith can't. I mean, you touched it. Good job. Congratulations. Ah, um, oh, change up. Why? No. Uh, look, Paul Skeens has this. Uh, it throws 100. And he's trying to throw 87 of this changeup. I don't know why he has this in his in his arsenal. I really don't. Um, just throw the splinker. The splinker serves the purpose of the changeup. And it is 13 mile per hour difference from that four seam where you think, oh my gosh, there's no way they're going to hit it. That's ridiculous. I think the difference in velocity at times for 95 versus 100 is actually more ridiculous because if you're trying to get the timing of 100, you're not, you're not getting that second wind that you get with 87. I think it's a large enough gap that it, it's essentially you start and then you redo it again. It's this little twitch that you do as a hitter. At 95, you're pretty much swinging your, your four seamer swing all the way through and the velocity gap will hit. Also, of course, the dip of it. Also, Skeens has such good command of that splinker. Like this to me, I think gives too much of a chance. Um, that 87 oh, uh, middle away, if that's a, a splinker, middle away I think the splinker is just better um I think you're gonna see that change up get removed from Skeens' arsenal yeah look this way they can hit that <laughs> he does that you you set right so this is a perfect perfect sequencing I mean he threw it too high up but the idea is sound here you have 94 of the splinker so I split or whatever I uh, you do this and you pair it with the four seamer looking like the same pitch 
now if Skeens threw this a little bit more in the zone, he probably would have gotten uh, bad timing, everything like that. You don't know which one it is, all that fun stuff. Oh, look at that terrible swing. This is a pitch out of the zone. And because it's so quick, it's so hard to tell for Badu if this is in the zone or not. Wow, what a ridiculous like defensive swing at 1-1. Uh, and here's the thing. Skeens gets more horizontal break on his four-seamer than typical. And it doesn't surprise me because look at his release. Like, um, I mean, his release is very, very low. Uh, it's it's this. It's down here. And he gets it more on the side of the ball coming across. And because of that, he's going to get more horizontal movement. And it's why, of course, the, the IVB isn't as good. Uh, but now at one two, I mean, you can just put him dead to rights here by throwing a splinter underneath this. This is insane. Yep. Oh no, no! Are you allowed to run now? And you're thinking like, Nick, that's really good. That's 100 down and away, and you got an out. Like that's good. No, this is first and third. Nobody out. You can't let. This is like the most ideal. Well, the, the biggest moment to get a strikeout because at least you maybe can get a double play in the next one. It, I don't like that pitch call. You know that he's going to be swinging at 100. You know he's going to be going after. He just did on a stupid one, right? So why would you throw it in the zone when he gets to two strikes like that? Give him a chance. I don't like it. Uh, we saw first pitch slider, second pitch slider. I mean, it's Torkelson. Torkelson's really bad at sliders, better at fastballs. Worried he's time for the fastball too. They throw a splitter really good there. Um, it's in his head. They're not just completely terrified of the fastball. I would actually throw it now at two, too. Oh, so sick. Oh, man. That is so filthy. Look at him. Oh, my gosh. Wow, this is a splitter that starts in the zone and goes out of it one more time. Paul Skeens is so filthy. Oh, oh my gosh. Mm, that's the good stuff. That's what you needed the previous hit back. Uh, 99 missing away. Uh, oh, that's a, God, that's the pitch. That's, that's, that's the wine. Why would you throw an 87 mile per hour change up when you can do that? Right? It serves the same purpose. Just do that. It's so filthy. Ah, uh, 98 missing up and away. And they clearly like the book of McKinstry is like away. There's a split. See, like that acts like the change. He's so far ahead of that thinking it's going to be 100. Oh, man. Right? Like, uh, even that is, I mean, that's super end of the bat. I would take that over the uh, the 87. That was more driven. Now you got to a fastball, by the way. You got to do it. No, you're helping him out. You're helping him out. He hasn't shown that he can hit the 100. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there it is. I mean, look, that's Paul Skeens. I could do the entire game, but, like, it's so fun. He's so good. And guess what? He got the coveted Ace is going to Ace label. Welcome, Paul Skeens. All right, uh, this would be a time that I would say, what? Again? Breakdown coming. Who is this? It's Mackenzie Gore. Oh my gosh. Hi, buddy. Oh man, Mac Mackenzie Gore is so good and he doesn't get enough love and he just got 10 strikeouts against Atlanta. And I just want, I, I just got to show him really quickly to y'all because this is a guy who's like a post hype uh, pitcher, four seamer, curveball, slider. He's got it all, and yeah, sure, he gets lots of double here at LBs. Okay, it was a good curveball, honestly. Uh, I'm fine with it. There's 97 down. Riley can't do anything with it. Um, this is the pitch. Oh, 98 inside like that. Like, he used to throw 95, and also he threw 97, and he told, you know, on, um, and we talked about on the craft, was how Gore changed his pelvic rotation a little bit, and now all of a sudden it gets two ticks harder, and he can do stuff like that. There's 97 up that also Riley can't handle, and you got to expect, like, a slider inside. Is coming now. There it is. Oh my gosh, that's devastating. Oh, Mackenzie Gore. Yes. Yes. 94 down and in. That's like a cutter, really? But like you see this 97 upstairs. And really, I mean, I'm not even lying. Like the before pitch, this 98 sets up this 90, 94 down. This is in the zone looking like that and just goes straight under. Like this is from here to here. This is more gyro than it is. Across, oh, absolute filth for Mackenzie Gore. Like, that's the good stuff. Oh, he's starting trying to throw a changeup, it looks like, over here, 86. The flails up. I just want to, yeah, that, that looks like a changeup to me. Says it at the bottom there, too. 
There's 98 down. Not exactly where he wants it. He wants it more over here and up. Zuna's like, oh, I have that one. That was pretty cool. So probably something off speed here. Probably that slider in the same location. Uh, and it's a curveball. I don't like the curveball in that case. I actually like the slider instead. I think the curveball is too aggressive in that moment. Maybe with two strikes, but not there. That is a, is a curveball for a strike. That works. I'm fine with that. Um, I too want to get back into the count. And you can see that Azuna just wants the heater. He just wants it so badly. Um, so you give it to him, but you see if you can extend away for it. You don't get it. You got to go slider. Slider is the nasty one. Um, you try, and that's, ah, oh, that's annoying. 91 here. He's just so aggressive. He's swinging everything. Ah, oh, that would have been a whiff over here. Um, 91 versus 94 is kind of interesting, too. What do you go with here? 3-2 from Mackenzie Gore. Fastball gives it to him. Now it fouls off. It's a bad location. It does tell me, though, that if it's a good location, it might actually work. Just throw something that's good. Execute something. 98 down the middle does not work. Does not work, Gore. You got this, buddy. I believe in you. Oh, a changeup. And here's the thing. You're like, oh, Nick, come on. This is so out of the zone. You're absolutely right. He didn't quite execute this, but he didn't quite he didn't execute this in the zone at a place where Azuna could hit it. He executed it out of it. And based on how we've seen Azuna be swinging at everything in this, does not surprise me that he sells out for this change up here, especially looking like the previous fastball. So gorgeous. This is how you do it, right? Man on second. You got to get the strikeouts. You can't allow anything in play. There's a slider away, which does not surprise me. Again, it's a big bat like Olsen. And a man on second with two outs. You think that he's going to be aggressive right out of the gate here. Uh, so you throw the slider away trying to lean in on that. There's 97. He's now behind him because now he's aware of the slider. You go back to the slider now. Really mess with him. Yep. And there's 93. Beautiful. Passive. Doesn't know what to do. Olsen, what do you want now? What are you going to get? What would you do? Think about that for a second. I think high heat is actually not going to work because that's really what Olsen wants. I'd probably do a curveball that he hasn't seen at 87. Try aim for it down over here. I think Olsen would swing over it. And that's what, how I would do this. Maybe you want to do another slider. It's up to you. Uh, he tries to do another slider. Fine. Overthrows it. Uh, I would do that curve, though. Uh, and he does, but he misses it too far over. I would do the curve again. Don't lean in with the fastball. Oh, it's a beautiful slider. Nice. Oh, that's dotted. Oh, and look at the, oh yeah, oh look at this face, zooming in on that, oh my gosh, he knows, he knows he's beat, you know, that's a perfect pitch, and he was like, oh man, Mackenzie Gore is so dope, that's striking out the side against Atlanta, one of the better offenses around, Mackenzie Gore's dope, makes us feel dope, you got two dope pitchers today, oh my gosh, baseball is in good hands, that's it for today, get out of here!